Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to be checking out the latest version of DeepSeek V3.1 Terminus. Now I love the name Terminus, but one thing we need to be thinking about is what is actually changing with these models? Are they getting better or are they getting worse? Thankfully, they do have a list of changes and as you can see, most of the improvements are there. Although it has gone down in some of the scoring, for example, in code forces, it's gone down ever so slightly. However, we're gonna be running the latest version. I've got two different quants. I've got a Q5 and I've got a mixed one between four and six. Size-wise, we see that one is 400 gigs and the other is 460. Now I've already done some tests with the old version of 3.1 and the Q5 version just to speed along this video. So we're gonna be testing it live using the Inferencer app with the Q46 version. So let's jump in right now. So as you can see, the first question I asked was Q5 was, the surgeon who is the boy's father says, I cannot operate on the boy, he is my son. Who is the surgeon to the boy? And the Q5 version thinks that the surgeon is the boy's mother. And what's crazy is if we actually inspect the entropy, we can see that there was no, no, no thinking about if it was a father or mother. It was just 100% according to its training data that the surgeon has to be the mum because the original riddle is that it's going to be a mother and it's a bit of confusion as a surgeon can be a female. But yeah, so let's just see if the Q46 version does any better with this test. Just start it off. So I'm going to copy that in, start a new chat. I'm going to paste an exact same question and what it's going to do now is going to load that 400 gigabytes into memory and it's going to go ahead and run it so let's just see how long it takes to load now with inference i've put in a lot of protection to make sure that you can't overload your system fingers crossed you can't overload your system so here it said that the model requires 375 gib and we got 444 so that means as we were loading the model another application was trying to do some stuff in the background with the memory and uh, I'm just gonna retry and should load it this time around. Now in future versions, what I probably will do is give it a retry count. The problem is if you do try using too much memory on the Macs, they can just come into a frozen state and then you won't be able to do anything on your Mac and then your computer will restart and about a minute later, you'll be able to get back into the system. So I've pretty much just got like a little watch just always monitoring the RAM, just make sure it doesn't get in a clugged up state. Cause what Mac OS does in the background, it's always moving memory from your memory into your hard drive and back and forth, especially when you reference it. So when you switch application or an application is doing something in the background, it's moving that memory from the hard drive into main memory and your application is also moving stuff in hard drive memory and it can get a bit chugged up and it has a little timeout internally. So if it gets in a chugged out state, it will just reset your computer. But as you can see, it's worked on the same turnaround. And the 4.6 version, look at that. The answer is the mother again. And just looking at the entropy, but it was still was 100% certain that it is the boy's mother. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be testing out the 4.6 version and the 5-bit version, and the one that performs the best in these tests, I'm gonna upload it so you guys can download and run it free from Hungry Face. So that question, it ran pretty much the same, and it's 100% certain that it's the mother. And I've got system prompt set to nothing, because I found that if you do introduce system prompt, that can also sway the behavior of the model. But we got the situation and it says that it's the mother in this case. So now I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna do a little coding test, do the exact same prompt as I did with the Q5, and then we'll do a little comparison between the old version of 3.1, the new version, the Q5 and the Q46 and see what happens there. So it's creating a single HTML file that contains interactive 3D solar system. So we're finished, we've got 16 tokens a second, 16.13. So the previous deep seek, the Q5 version, this is what it gave when you gave that prompt. We got a solar system over here, plants are flying around. It looks generally good. Now the new version, as you can see, there are no planets. So I think it's gone downgraded there in the Q4 version, the Q46. Previously, this was a much, much nicer visualization. It probably looks better than the Q5 version because it's a bit more shaded, a bit more smoother, except there's no animation. So definitely the Q5 version, I'll go give it the marks there. The new version now, the Q46, it doesn't actually load. And if you look at the console, there is an error. So Orbit Controls is not a constructor. So that's not a good start over here. So that's uh, 
it's pretty much gone down. Before it used to actually show something, now it's showing nothing, so that's really bad. One thing I might just look into quickly, it says line 120. So I'm just gonna in investigate the tokens here. So it was 100% certain that three, and when it comes to orbit, it was still 100%, and it was pretty much very, very certain of this line of code. So that means it was just pretty much copy and pasting what's this in its memory. So we probably lost something in the quantization. So that is a shame because I thought the Q46 version might run better than the Q5, but let's just see how it works with other questions. So another one I've got here is, let's ask it to present five complicated maths equations in latex. And let's just see what it shows you. So it's printing out the code here that I would need to paste into latex so I can see it. So it's told me I can use Overleaf as a latex editor tool to see these maths. So I'm just gonna copy this in, fire up a merge program. So that's the 4.6 version. And this one is the five version. It's got Einstein's field equation here. Let's see if that one is the same. And no, it's actually presented it slightly differently. This one's using R underscore, and this one's using G underscore. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna ask it to render it in here, because we wanna see what the equation actually looks like. So all it's doing now is rather than it putting in a code block for you to copy and paste into a latex editor like Overleaf, you can actually just see what the equation looks like straight away. And we see Einstein's field equation, G, U, V, W, and previously, so it's comparing them at the moment and it's saying that both equations are exactly the same. So in summary, your equation is more common and explicit way of writing Einstein's field equation. And so it looks like the quantization just made it pick a different version of the maths to use. But luckily enough, we can see that the maths is printed out well and everything's working out fine here. So maybe some of the maths experts here can tell me which one is the best representation. Would you want the one that begins with R or the one begins with G? Let me know in the comment section below. Next up, we're gonna jump in and we're gonna do some Python code. So we saw that in the HTML code, the JavaScript, the Q5 version ran better, even though it seems like it did get a little bit worse than the 3.1 version but let's go ahead and see if it's improved in the Python code. So I've got a 3D car driving game. All right, so we'll start off with DeepSeek 3.1, the original, and this is the Q4 quant. And we do have a car on the screen and we can move it left and right. And it's kind of 3D, <laughs> it's transparent. All right, this code is compiled. We can probably work with it to improve it. And this is the old version of DeepSeek. We're now gonna jump up to the Q5 edition. And this is still the old version 3.1. And that one, that one doesn't even run. So the Q4.6 version was actually better than the Q5 when it comes to Python code. Now we're gonna jump onto the Terminus edition of DeepSeek. So Python game.py, and this is 4.6. And that one, it says cos is not defined, so that failed to run. So we're gonna jump up to the Q5 version. And we do have something on the screen, and it is kind of 3Ds happening. I wouldn't call it a car driving game, but it's pretty trippy that something is actually up on the screen. So that's two tests that the Q5 version ran better than the Q4.6. And that is surprising. So that's uh, weird. But the best one that we kept out of this was the actual old, old version of DeepSeek V3.1, because that looks more like a car driving game than the other one. Look, you can go back, you can go forward, you can go left and right. It's kind of like an overdrive kind of feel there. All right, that was interesting. Now we're gonna do one more coding test. Now this is a real life code that I'm always brainstorming with. So let's just see if I can get it up and running. So we see our prompt processing is at the bottom there. So we're halfway through there. It's kind of good having a visual indicator. I don't know previously when I ran this, we had no clue what was going on, but now it's up and running, getting 17 tokens a second. And here we're just asking kind of like a Swift UI question. Why, do you, why am I using two variables to handle the focus? And it says the difference is, is the scope and purpose. Is text extra focused? It's the internal state and it's focused is the external state. And that is the correct answer. That's good. Let's see what it comes up with. And we can compare it with the Q5's answer. And here I'm just gonna ask for clarification on if I can get away with just using one variable instead of two. So the Q5 version of this actually said, yes, I can just switch it down to one, one variable and it gave me incorrect code. I'll show you that and well, let's just see what the Q4.6 version does. And here it says, yes, you can just use one. And it's saying that I can just use 
the ball binding and I can pass it into focused is, is there. So I'm gonna show you in code. So it's suggesting that I can change this to just is focused. And if I compile that, it's gonna come up with an error. Cannot convert ball into a focused state. So that is incorrect, that's telling me, but the good thing about it is the Q46 and the Q5 version, both were incorrect at the same time. So that means Q46 quant is very, very close to the Q5. What I'm gonna do is I wanna see how confident it is of saying it. So it says, yes, you can. It was very confident in saying you can. It didn't, like might was 0.04%. It was 100% pretty much saying can. It's Q5, when I asked it this question, it wasn't sure about it's about no. It was up 3% chance that it was gonna say, unfortunately you can't. And that would have been the actual correct response. So that is the state of play with the Terminus edition of DeepSeek 3.1. It might be better. It looks like from our test, the Q5 version is better than the Q46, unfortunately, because I was hoping to only use the 400 gigabyte version. But I think in a future video, I'll be checking out Quinn 3 Coda. I've already uploaded that to Hugging Face. That's kind of like my go-to one. It's, it's really, really nice to use and it's, it doesn't use that much gigabytes, so like 360, that kind of stuff. And I've got a Q6 version of that. That's something to check out. Update wise, I've just done some basic logic. It said that the surgeon was the mum, even though the surgeon said that it was the son and the dad. So it failed that one. And the results seemed to be worse with, when it came to 3JS and it came to Python code. So maybe the older version is better. Maybe I should have done a more sensitive, maybe I should have done a more censorship test. Maybe they found some stuff you shouldn't be asking it that you got away with. And if you're interested in the app that I'm using, it's available now on the App Store, Inferencer, and you can do all cool stuff like we saw maths rendering and you can kind of see into the mind of the LLM. So for example, red means that it's a contentious token, high entropy. So it wasn't sure about saying passing or sharing. And we can jump in and say bound, it was saying controls. That you can see the percentage and the probabilities of the tokens that it will pick into the mind. And you can also ignore tokens and you can even control the response. So for example, here I've pre-filled their response with no, you can't. So hopefully it will dignify my text and it will tell me why I can't. And it says, because of Swift UI's API design limitations. So it actually knows the knowledge is there in its mind. It just chose to say, yes, you can originally, which is, uh, yeah. So it knows, it knows it won't compile. It knows it won't compile. So if you just feed it the right direction, it does know the answer. But yeah, something to know. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.